In your career as a central banker, you've made tough decisions. Obviously, one was the capital controls before you headed the central bank. And also, um, there was also um, asking the banks to consolidate from more than 50 banks. We wanted to bring it down to 10 banks. Um, the decision was widely seen to be, um, I, I suppose, uh, people raised a lot of questions about that decision. Um, Yet, central banks saw it as necessary. It was something that the industry had to do. So I can imagine a lot when you have to make unpopular decisions, it's, it's quite lonely being at the top. And um, where do you continue to derive your leadership energy? Right. Well, the leadership energy is derived from the challenge the job brings. So you thrive on challenges? Exactly. <laughs> Uh, it would, uh, if you were doing more of the same all the time, uh, it would diminish, I believe, the energy levels. Having the challenge and the aspirations, the aspirations of what you want to achieve uh, brings that excitement and um, the energy levels to give that drive to pursue uh, the outcomes. And again, I want to emphasize the clarity of the outcomes, having clarity of the vision that you want to achieve, having clarity of the outcomes of the policies, this is uh, what is important. Then to articulate this uh, uh, um, objective or outcomes and uh, vision uh, throughout the whole organization, there has to be an understanding. So the whole organization can be aligned to achieving those outcomes. And this is uh, what is important. Uh, and if you don't have that clarity, it allows you to, to be distracted, distracted by other suggestions of what we should be doing at the time when things happen. And of course, uh, actions by the central bank has to be anticipatory. If you take the actions after, in response to events, then that will be uh, firefighting, and again, that uh, sometimes diminishes energy because there will be exhaustion, uh, organizational fatigue uh, as a result of that. But if you are uh, have clarity in what you want to achieve and then you build up your organizational capability to be able to rise to dealing with these issues, then it will be... Uh, improved significantly. You mentioned about anticipatory. Um, across the world, it's, it's quite common that public institutions tend to be behind the curve in terms of regulation. Uh, for example, the Bitcoin virtual currency situation and also, um, you know, the, uh, oftentimes there are financial schemes that should be regulated but they're not regulated because they don't come, the laws are outdated. Yes. So, what do you, what do, you do to ensure that the central bank is constantly up to date? Well, we continually scan the environment and look at what is likely to develop. And uh, then we put in place uh, the important aspects that will allow us to uh, deal with these new issues. And for example, in these recent 10 years, we have introduced new legislation, new laws. We have actually re-enacted uh, our legislation for central banking in 2009 after 50 years of central banking. And um, more recently, the parliament, had, before the elections, passed our Financial Services Act and the Islamic Financial Services Act, which are wide range, deal with wide-ranging issues that not only are important for our country, but this current global financial crises uh, surfaced for uh, in showing that uh, precisely the points that you mentioned, what they describe as shadow banking, financial activities that are outside the, our purview. But now the central bank has been accorded by these new legislation, new powers to address this. And we have new governance structures, processes uh, to deal with these kind of issues. And that is why central banks need to continually have organizational transformation so that they can uh, be in a position, well positioned to deal with these kind of issues. And 
as you know, what we see in the trends, more women are coming into the workforce yes. and also the Gen Ys, um, they're going to form a substantial percentage of the workforce um, you know, in five to ten years' time. So um, how do you expect, um, how, how do you anticipate traditional organisations, especially like the central bank, will, will evolve to cater for more women and Gen Ys in, in the workforce? Well, I have to tell you that in this bank, gender has never been an issue that we had to pay significant attention to because uh, those who could uh, demonstrate, even at the entry level as well as all the way up to senior management, they have shown their capability and they have every opportunity uh, to rise to senior positions. And um, about 50% of our workforce, almost 3,000 are women. And in my position, in engaging with the international community from countries from Asia, from the Middle East, Africa, Europe, and the US, I don't think gender has ever been an issue to, towards me, for example, for being a woman. They did not treat me differently. So I think it's very important that we have, of course, organizations that provide these opportunities. But uh, when we provide opportunities for like having a daycare center and having cafeteria that provides food from 7 to 7 in the evening, uh, all help also uh, the um, both men and women who work in our workforce because both of them face the challenges of time management, balancing their life with their families and children. Uh, all of us face the same issues. And with a central bank kind of uh, structure, a public institution, oftentimes yes. it's a top-down leadership style, and that may not necessarily work with a Gen Y or a millennial kind of um, workforce. Yes. So, do you foresee that there has to be a change in how uh, management would be? Well, that's part of our organisational transformation. And during my term as governor, and this is uh, my 14th year, I would like to mention that we've had organisation, it's been an organisational transformation, has been a continuous process. But we had three fundamental periods of uh, significant transformation of our organization. And of course, one of them is that we move from working by departments uh, as having uh, multidisciplinary and cross-departments teams that work on certain projects. And each project will have the highly technically competent people with those skills, and then they will have the highly experienced people who have institutional background, and then they will have the very young people who are very enthusiastic and with the good backgrounds. So it's always a, a, a team that is very diverse, and I believe these kind of teams bring out very good solutions. And we have worked that way for many years now. So it's no longer hierarchical when we have an issue like we want to do an interest rate reform. Then we will pick a team across departments. And people are taught, actually, how do you collaborate horizontally across the organization? You should also look at not what your department wants to achieve, but what the bank wants to achieve. For example, if we have an, an objective of access to financing, then the whole organization should look at how they can contribute to that outcome. So the way we have work now is very, very different from how we worked 10 years ago. And, uh, some people couldn't adjust to the new way of working. They still wanted a very hierarchical uh, approach. And, and of course, this doesn't work and anymore. The organization also became more flatter. And uh, uh, we no longer have a hierarchical approach where the top is uh, very powerful and the one at the lowest end of the hierarchy is powerless. Uh, that doesn't. Everyone has a chance of contributing to uh, outcomes that the bank wants to achieve. 